G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. I've been back for a week now from my honeymoon. We went for four days to Bali, me and my wife Kim. Um, so it's time for a quick catch up and uh, sort of see where we are with the Roman Legionnaires and a bunch of other stuff I've got out. So let's have a quick look. Okay, we'll put some lights on so we can see what we're doing. So the auxiliary, first auxiliary unit at the back there, that was finished quite some time ago. Um, or the painting at least and the, and the quick shading of these guys. And uh, I've decided to base everything on 60mm squares, six figures per base. Um, it just, uh, it looks better to me. And you know, like everyone says, the frontage in Hail Caesar and uh, a lot of other games is what's most important, not the number of figures per stand. Um, so the Legionnaires at the front, they've all been done. I've finished all the painting that I can do. Uh, all I need now is the shield decals. And the ones that come in the Warlord, or the ones that I, at least I got, this box is very many years old. Um, uh, the decals that I got from Warlord Games were not very good. They didn't stick to the shields. So um, I'm waiting on new ones to arrive. So that's where we are with my Roman army. Two units done in a year. Woohoo! Um, well, they're not even done. They still need to be based and stuff. And the Legionnaires aren't even finished. These guys are just blue tacked down to uh, where they'll eventually be. So that's my update for the Romans. I am pretty impressed. I'll do another unit of these guys um, fairly soon, but uh, as you can see, there's um, other stuff all over the place. Um, some figures that I've primed up here, the up next on the painting queue, and then a whole bunch of stuff on shelves over here. So we'll talk about that in a second. So there we go. That's the progress with the Roman army. I have put a light on now so we can see what's going on. Um, that's the progress with the Roman army so far. As I just said, I will do another unit of Legionnaires soon, but I've got a couple of other projects to finish first, or things that will happen much, much faster than those guys. And up next are those figures that I just showed you. They're the Denisovan figures from Eureka Miniatures. Um, they're not currently on their website at the moment. Um, I don't know why, um, but uh, you can always send them an email saying I'm interested in the Denisovan. So let's have a bit of a look for uh, at them. They're very, very simple figures, and they should be super quick to paint. So I hope we can see something in these figures. So the Denisovans are the sort of mm, descendants, I suppose, um, of, of, of Aboriginals here in Australia. They're from, um, well, this, this region of the world, I suppose. I guess you could date them back quite some time. I'm not way up on my history, but um, look, they, they were around when uh, Australia and Papua New Guinea and Tasmania were all part of the same mainland. Um, so they're, they're very, very simple figures. Basically, um, let's see if we can get one into a... Uh, we're not going to be able to see anything. I need a proper little light box. Anyway, they're very, very simple figures. It's basically just going to be an airbrush for the majority of the skin. And then picking out some weapons and some loincloths and stuff. And then these guys will be done. I'll be using these for, tri for games of tribal and for uh, the supplement Primeval. Um, which I'll be filming a bunch of content for very, very soon. So they're the next project. I expect these guys to take two nights to complete. Um, so that's those guys. Better wrap this up pretty quickly because uh, it's uh, 20 past 11 at night and Charlotte's uh, awake and screaming upstairs. Next project will be more Maoris, again, for use in tribal. Again, these are from Eureka Miniatures. These are fantastic figures. Again, very simple by the same sculptor, I think. Um, lovely figures to paint, and uh, I've already got a bunch of those. I made myself a bunch of these trays at the studio. This one was specifically for tribal warbands. It's got two spots for uh, two different leaders. I normally base them on a 40mm uh, base and put a couple of figures just so they stand out. Um, bases in tribal don't really make a difference, so I've used 40mm bases for my chiefs, 30mm uh, bases for my warriors, and then 25mm uh, bases for uh, the the units of guys. Now in tribal you have a unit of five guys. They either have long weapons, as you can see this first row all have long weapons, or short weapons like the, the second row there. So I fished out more of those guys. I found some um, sort of Somalian militia figures. Again, these are from Eureka, which I got some time back for uh, modern wargaming. They're very, very nice figures. They'll be fun to paint. Um, a lot of these still require cleanup and whatnot. I also picked up the other day a bunch of, uh, we'll move that guy out the way, he should be with the others. I picked up a bunch of animals, so for some of the um, scenarios in, uh, in Primeval specifically, um, some of the hunt scenarios and stuff like that, you get different sorts of beasts. Um, and so I've got a bunch of chimpanzees here and 
some gorillas and you know I've multi-based some of them in single bases just to keep things interesting. Some aurochs. So these are not necessarily cows, but I mean they've got horns on them, they're called aurochs, and again I've multi-based a couple of them and then individually based others. Also got a bunch of uh kangaroos and emus and stuff. These are some of the um Afghan civilian figures uh, again from Eureka all of this stuff is from Eureka why not they're local and I can go down and visit them I think maybe these guys are either French or Bundeswehr modern figures mm, I can't remember I found those so I stuck them on some bases and put them in trays um, I made a, a bunch of these trays at the studio they're just for putting um, figures on the shelf so I can move stands of figures around easily and uh, packed them away because the place was just getting out of control. There was mess all over this desk. There was not a spot on this desk to put anything. Um, but I've, I've cleaned that up. TV snacks are one of the best things you can eat late at night. Uh, there we go. So, so many things to work on. Uh, and I'll slowly start cranking them through. I picked up some new stuff the other day. Some new brushes and some new airbrushes. So let's have a quick look at those before we sign off for uh, this update. Let's start off down here on the ground. I picked up this new Earwider compressor. I can't remember exactly what model it is. I don't know if it's on there. I uh, don't know. I can't remember. But it's got this fancy handle just for being able to move it around. This handle also doubles as a tank. So you can see the uh, air outlet from the compressor here feeds into this hollow tube. So it holds maybe a couple of litres of compressed air. Um, and that's now feeding my two new ear wider airbrushes. So I picked up this Neo uh, with a trigger on it, the TRN2. Um, it's got different sorts of cup attachments and a suction feed. Um, and obviously a couple of different sorts of gravity cups on it. I've used this only once so far. And I've got to say that I wish the handle was just a little bit longer. Because the trigger mechanism is nice. Especially for base coating scenery and whatnot. But the fact that it's just a little bit short down here is annoying. Um, it's, it kind of forces you to hold it here but then you can't pull the trigger properly and you know, it's a little bit uncomfortable to use so I might need to make something that I can wrap around the bottom so that you can get sort of a proper proper trigger action um, you know it's, it's not too bad this is an amazing brush though has a big beautiful spray it has a 0.5 needle in it so obviously it's, it's massive um, so I picked up that also picked up uh, this one here, the HPC Plus, this has a 0.3 needle in it for a little bit more detail work again, for uh, specifically for scenery work, but I mean this will be okay for base coating miniatures. The, uh, the TRN2 is, is just way too big, that 0.5 uh, millimeter needle is just overkill, but uh, it's great for base coating terrain. I should be able to use this for the miniatures though, that 0.3 needle is similar to other ones that I have. Um, it's nowhere near sort of the 0.125 or 0.2 uh, mil needles that you get in um, other brushes, but you know, I don't really need that. So picked that up. Picked up some new brush cleaner. So I use uh, Master's brush cleaner. Uh, picked up uh, another uh, tub of that. And ha -ha, some Winder and Newton Series 7 brushes. So in here... I got uh, the full set, well not the full set, there's four brushes in here. Oh wow, now I know what people talk about when they do it. It's difficult to do one handed. I don't know where my tripods are. Oh, so many of them. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of brushes in here. I picked up the size 0, 1, 2 and 3 of the Spectre Gold series, which are these red brushes. Oh, here we go. So these are the Sable Synthetic brushes from uh, Winsor Newton. The Spectre Gold series or Spectre Gold 2. They're, they're a, a, a sable and synthetic combo uh, brush. So I've got those. Uh, I got the blue brushes here. The Cotman series. These are fully synthetic brushes. And then obviously I got the, uh, the Windsor & Newton series 7 brushes. And also got all of these brushes and the brush cleaner for the guys in the studio for all the great work that they've been doing so far. Um, so everyone's got a whole new set of brushes. Uh, and uh, some brush cleaner. So I picked up those. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I've got a few other bits and pieces, some new glue and all that sort of stuff, but I'm really looking forward to using these. I haven't tried them out yet, um, but there we go. I've been wanting some of these for a long time, and uh, yeah, finally pulled the trigger.
so there we go, no hat update today, uh, again it's a very late night, uh, didn't really get anything done today except priming those Denisovan figures, and then Charlotte would just, just wanted to, just wanted to cuddle and watch TV and she still hasn't gone to bed, so I better go take care of that. So yes, the Dennis Ovens, a couple of nights working on those and they'll be done. And uh, then I can start doing some primal content. Looking forward to it. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.